Howdy, it's Mr. Pete again, and welcome to episode number 63B, the answer to my What Is It Mystery Tool series. And I had four or five items, and they were way too easy. Uh, people just, they got all of them without any problem at all. Some that I did not know what they were, but uh, thank you for participating. Let's go through these and uh, show you what they are, and I have to return some of them to their rightful owners. Well, this two-pound ball-peen hammer made of stainless steel loaned to me by Roger. You know, and Roger suggested that possibly it was a medical tool, but I, I said, that's preposterous. It is so heavy. And we figured it was for putting those $3,000 toilet seats onto airplanes. But now they tell me that the toilet seats do not cost that much anymore because they are able to 3D print weird-shaped <laughs> toilet seats that are used on airplanes. Well, that's free of charge, but this is made by a company, and it's etched here, and I, I'm not even going to attempt to show you that, but the name on there is, if I can find it here, not a tool. Well, that company appears to be out of business, so let me go up to the computer and show you the follow-up on that, but this is obviously used by, according to everybody that has participated, it is used by surgeons, orthopedic surgeons, apparently for driving in hip joints, but it sure seems heavy for that. It's all stainless, including the wells, and it could be cleaned, uh, sterilized in an autoclave. It's about 400 bucks if you had to buy it. Roger paid a deuce for it. There it is. I captured the name finally. If I got the light just right, not a tool, stainless USA. Not a tool apparently was bought out or sold or became Steratool. This is really all I could find on not a tool, and I think it's a very old internet page. They're showing a stainless steel C clamp, probably cost two hundred dollars. And this is the Steratool website. The global source for stainless steel tools. And they have a complete line of mechanics tools and you name it. Used in various trades and I'm not sure exactly where you would use some of these tools. Item 2 loaned to me by John. Notice that it says standard oil on it, so I thought possibly it had some kind of application around oil or oil cans, but it's just a kitchen gadget, really. You got a bottle opener here, and then I'm told that these teeth are for opening up uh, canning jars, and this little lip here for lifting that lid off of a can of tomatoes. I thought possibly these teeth would have been used to, to open a jar. This is an oil can here. I never heard of Atlas Mason, did you? Would have been used like that, but and maybe it was, I don't know. But I think that little pry there is the key to what it did. You don't see these much anymore. Remember when oil was sold that way at all of the gas stations? Bulk oil, 19 cents a quart. This, of course, is a twig off of a soybean plant, very common here. And they used to rotate the crops because these are legumes that would produce nitrogen in the soil, and then they plant corn the next year, which requires a lot of nitrogen. Hundreds of uses for this besides animal feed. Henry Ford was making, attempting to make paints and uh, sheet fenders and all kinds of parts and they did the knobs on the heater and all of that were made from soybeans years ago. In Illinois, during the Second World War, license plates were made of soybeans to save metal. Okay, for item four, go way back to this video if you want a complete explanation on it. But of course, it's a tool for cutting BX or Greenfield. It will crimp it and cut it and all of those miserable operations. That's just a very hard material 
to uh, deal with, as you know. So you, you can go back and watch that complete one. And fortunately, I sold that tool at a tool sale shortly after I made this original video. And this is the original patent for this 1925 prehistoric tool. I'll put another still at the end of the video if you want to study that, or look this up. And I guess I wasn't so terribly surprised that virtually everyone knew that the mystery guest here for extra credit was the famous Edsel Ford, son of Henry Ford. There he is with Henry, who was quite abusive and mean to him and controlling, even though Edsel was president of Ford Motor at a very young age. But he died of cancer in the very early 40s. But what shocked me is how many of you knew that this picture of Edsel Ford in a mural was painted by the famous Mexican artist Diego Rivera. So I guess that's a lot a better known fact than, than what I thought. And he was a genius and did many murals including at Rockefeller Center but I think that they had to paint over them because he was uh, quite a character and would paint what he wanted regardless of what the, uh, the man with the pocketbook was asking for. Here are a few pictures of Diego Rivera off of the internet. He was accused of being a communist. I don't know if that was true or not. I don't know why I'm telling you all of this but Diego Rivera was married to the Mexican surrealist artist Frida Kahlo. She was handicapped at a very early age in a bus accident. She painted many pictures of herself. It was a very tempestuous marriage, to say the very least. There is a wonderful movie called Frida. I am going to make it required viewing. And with that, this is Tubal Cain saying so long for now. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Also, watch for a video where I show you how to make serrations on a workpiece using the little South Bend shaper. And that would be a good application for vice jaws or decorative purposes. So watch for that video.